today I've got a nice number theory problem that comes from the 2000 Taiwanese Math Olympiad. And there are several pretty cool things to this problem. First of all, it's this kind of nice exponential equation. And then secondly, it won't use anything fancy at all. So no modular arithmetic, nothing like for Mazdal theorem, nothing like that, just divisibility. So that's pretty cool. So let's see what we have here. We want to find all natural numbers, x and y, such that y to the power of x squared equals x to the power of y plus 2. And before we get started, let's notice that an easy solution, one that we can just like look at and guess, is the solution when x equals y equals 1. And then let's also notice that if x is not equal to 1, then that's equivalent to y not being equal to 1. Because notice if y is not equal to 1, then this left-hand side is not equal to 1. But it's impossible for x to be 1 in that case, and vice versa. So that means for the rest of our solution, we might as well assume that x and y are bigger than 1. I'm going to say that they're bigger than or equal to 2, though. Okay, nice. Now, let's also notice that the left-hand side is an exponential where the base is y, and the right-hand side is an exponential where the base is x. But that means that y and x must both be pure powers of the same number. That's the only way that we could even get off the ground here. So let's put that here. So let's note that x must in fact be of the form z to the m and y must be of the form z to the n. And now let's note that z is bigger than or equal to 2 and m and n are any natural numbers. We know that z is bigger than or equal to 2 because x and y are bigger than or equal to 2 and then m and n are the appropriate powers that make this work. Okay, so now let's see what both sides of our equation look like under this setup. So we have y to the power x squared is in fact equal to z to the n to the power of z to the 2m, where I used exponent rules to simplify this x squared to z to the 2 times m. But now we can further use exponent rules to rewrite this as z to the power n times z to the 2m. Okay, so that's looking good. But now let's notice that x to the y plus 2 can be written as z to the m to the power z to the n plus 2. But we can simplify that as well into z to the m times z to the n plus 2 times m. Okay, great. But now since these two objects right here are equal to each other, then these two objects over here are also equal to each other. So we've got this equation right here, which I'm boxing in green. But now since exponential functions are one to one, that means the two exponents are equal to each other. So in other words, we have n times z to the 2m is the same thing as m times z to the n plus 2m. So we've got something that looks like that. So now I'm going to box that in orange to save for later, and then we're also going to reorder it just a bit. So I'll reorder this to solve for 2m. So we also know that 2 times m is the same thing as n times z to the 2m minus m times z to the n. The fact we've got a 2m in the exponent and an n in the exponent tells us that we might be fruitful if we think about the ordering of 2m and n. That is which one is bigger or smaller. So let's look at that. So let's maybe go up here and notice that if n is less than 2m, so that means that this z to the 2m is the largest power of z, then that means this whole thing, this 
2m is a multiple of z to the n. So let's write that. 2m is a multiple of z to the n. But I don't think that's problematic. So let's look at the other case. So the other case will be if n is bigger than or equal to 2m, but that means that 2m is a multiple of z to the 2m. So that's just from noticing that n will be larger than 2m, so we can divide a z to the 2m out. But that's actually gonna cause a problem, and let's see why that will cause a problem. So if 2m is a multiple of z to the 2m, that means that 2m is larger than z to the 2m. So if you're a multiple of an integer, you're necessarily bigger than or equal to that integer. So in other words, we have z to the 2m is less than or equal to 2m, which is immediately looking a little bit sketchy because we've got this exponential thing on the left-hand side, and we have this polynomial. Well, it's a linear polynomial thing over there on the right-hand side. But now let's notice that z is bigger than or equal to two, so this will indeed imply that two to the two m is less than or equal to two m. Again, that's because two to the two m will live on this side of z to the two m. But notice that this is impossible. So this leads us to a contradiction, and we get a contradiction there because 2 to the x is indeed bigger than x for all x. And that's the exact opposite of what we have for this inequality. Okay, so what does that mean? That means this branch right here is impossible, which means we must have n less than 2m. So let's maybe add that here. So with n less than 2m. And now let's work off that fact. So far we've got n times z to the 2m is the same thing as m times z to the n plus 2m, where 2m is bigger than n. So that means we can write 2m as n plus a, where a is a natural number. And here we're gonna use a fairly interesting trick. And this trick comes from the solution that you can find on the Art of Problem Solving forums. So it's pretty easy to find that given that those uh, forums are indexed by the country of the exam as well as the year. Okay, so now let's get to that trick. So we're gonna focus on this number a. And in fact, we'll figure out what this number a and this number z is first and use that to figure out m and n. Okay, so let's look at a plus one. And let's notice that a plus one is bigger than or equal to a over n plus n over n. Well, it's pretty clear that one is the same thing as n over n. And then, since n is a natural number, if we divide a by n, we possibly get something smaller. We may get the same thing if n is equal to one, but we possibly get something smaller. But now, we can put this together and we get a plus n over n. And why did we do that? Well, that's so that we can rewrite this as two times m, because a plus n is just two m by our setup up here. So we have this is equal to 2m over n, like that. But now we can use our equation up here, which is like the defining relation of m, z, and n, as well as this inequality right here to work ourselves into a new inequality. So this will be bigger than or equal to n times z to the 2m minus n over n. And that's because 2m is bigger than or equal to that numerator. And we get that by solving this equation for 2m, factoring out a z to the n, and then applying this inequality right here. So that's not so hard. I'll leave that little detail for you. But now notice the n's cancel, and we get this is z to the 2m minus n. Okay, but notice 2m minus n is equal to a. So that's z to the a. 
So looking at the extreme left and right hand side of this inequality, we see that we have a plus one is bigger than or equal to z to the a. So let's bring that down. So like I said, we have a plus one is bigger than or equal to z to the a power. And z is bigger than or equal to two, whereas a is a natural number. So that's our setup here. But this only has a single solution, and this only has a single solution because exponentials always grow faster than polynomials. So if we have the inequality in the other direction, then we're really limited by the number of values that will make this work because eventually the exponential will start winning. So maybe I won't, so maybe we'll leave this little bit as a homework exercise as well. But what we end up with is that z has to be equal to two and a has to be equal to one. And actually, let's maybe sketch how this would go. So if z is bigger than or equal to three, then that means that z is bigger than e, but z being bigger than e means we have a plus one is bigger than or equal to e to the a, which tells us that e to the a minus a minus one is less than or equal to zero. So we can focus on this function here, e to the x minus x minus one, and show that this function is always positive as long as x is bigger than one. So just to reiterate, we've got f of x is equal to e to the x minus x minus one. Let's note that f evaluated at one is positive and f prime of x is bigger than zero for all x bigger than one. So it's positive and then it's increasing, which means it'll always be positive, which means it's never less than or equal to zero, which means z cannot be bigger than or equal to three, which means that z is equal to two. But once you get z is equal to two, it's a pretty quick jump to get that a is equal to one. So there we have z equals two and a equals one. Okay, so let's add this z is equal to two and a is equal to one, which notice that is equivalent to saying that 2m is equal to n plus one. Let's add these two rules back into our equation up here and see what that gives us. So we determined our base, z is equal to two, so that means x is a power of two and y is a power of two. Furthermore, plugging in that base, as well as our value a, which we had on the last board, into our defining equation, we get the following equation. Okay, so now let's break this into two cases. So our first case will be the simple case, which is n equals one. So why am I gonna look at the n equals one case? Because that'll reduce this two to the n minus one to an odd number. It'll put a zero up here. And so I think maybe that motivates us that this is a special case. Okay, so plugging n equals one up here, we'll see that this equation is indeed satisfied we get one times two to the one plus one is equal to one plus one times two to the zero plus one plus one. But that checks out. So that means it is possible for n to be equal to one. But then notice if n is equal to one, then that means that m is also equal to one, given that two times m was n plus one. So we've got n is equal to one, m is equal to one, z is equal to two, and that gives us our first solution, which is x is equal to two and y is equal to two. Or I guess that's really our second solution given our first equation, a solution was this like easy guess solution. So, but that's our first case. So our second case, is that n is strictly bigger than one. But n being bigger than one means it's bigger than or equal to two. Okay, so if n is bigger than one, then that means two to the n minus one is even. 
That's because we have a non-zero power in that exponent right there. Okay, so that's good to keep in mind, but maybe we need to rewrite that to see why that is a problem. So let's take our equation right here. So n times two to the n plus one, we can factor an n plus one out here. We get n plus one times two to the n minus one plus one. Okay. So now let's notice two to the n minus one is even, meaning that two to the n minus one plus one is odd. Furthermore, we see that two to the n plus one is even, but those two things together tell us that this number right here must be even, which is the same thing as saying that n is odd. But that means all of the powers of two right here must condense into n plus one. And that's uh, for a couple of different reasons. Maybe because n and n plus one, well, one's even and one is odd. This one should be odd, but they're also relatively prime. So we could actually say quite a bit more than this. But if all of the powers of two for two to the n plus one condense into n plus one, we see that two to the n plus one divides n plus one. But that means that two to the n plus one is less than n plus one but we know that's not true by a similar thing that we saw before, which had to do with the fact that two to the x was always bigger than x. So we've reached a contradiction, and that's because two to the x is always bigger than x. So that means this case here where n is bigger than one is not possible, which means our case right here when n is equal to one is the only case that works after our original guess, which means we have our one other solution, which is x equals two, y equals two. I've done lots of interesting number theory problems on the channel. There should be one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out, and that's a good place to stop.